Hi everyone and welcome back to the third part of Lesson 4, Level 2 in Spreadsheets for Business. In this video we'll demonstrate how to create nested IF functions into our formulas. In our previous video we created a pretty advanced formula containing the IF function and various nested functions and formulas embedded into it in order to determine the 90-day past due surcharge here in column K of the spreadsheet. The Zones Accounting Department has devised another set of rules to determine an alternative past due penalty scheme that issues greater penalties for the longer that the customer has been delinquent in paying their bills to the zone. Darn those accounting departments for making our lives tougher, but what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, right? Let's build those Excel muscles so we can show off our skills to our accounting brethren. We see some of the initial details of this additional business rule here in these cells. If the 90-day past due balance is greater than zero, we'll assess a $100 penalty. If there's no 90-day balance, then we check to see if there's a 60-day past due balance and see if it's greater than zero. If it is, then we'll assess a $50 penalty. And finally, if there's no 90 or 60-day past due balance, then we want to check to see if there's a 30-day past due balance. And if that's greater than zero, we'll assess a $25 penalty. If there are no past due balances, then the penalty is zero. Let's name these cells containing our different penalties. The first one I'll name penalty 90 day. The next one penalty 60 day. And this last one penalty 30 day. I've also set up an additional column over here on the right of our data called alternate penalty scheme to hold a new formula that will do all of this awesome logic needed to follow this new rule. First off, let me write the different parts of the function out up here that are needed for each part of this rule. Once I get the separate parts working, I'll assemble them into one coherent, all-encompassing formula. Let's start off up here with the 90-day past due penalty, and remembering the basics of this rule, if the 90-day past due amount is greater than zero, then the penalty is $100. This sounds like an if function to me. So let's start that here. Equals if, left parentheses. Let's pick the first 90-day customer here. Greater than zero. We'll charge the $100 penalty that we named penalty 90-day. If this logical test here is false, then I'll just have this formula render a Boolean false value for the time being. Similarly, let's create the next chunk of logic. Equals if the 60-day past due amount for this customer is greater than zero, comma, then we want to render the value from this cell, comma, else, false. Finally, we'll repeat this formula for the 30-day past due penalty equals if, left parentheses, the 30-day past due amount from this customer greater than zero, comma, then this penalty amount called the penalty 30-day, comma, else false. Before we go any further, let's test these out to make sure that they're all working. Changing the 90-day balance to zero, we get false. Cool. Now we change it to one, and we get 100. Good deal. Let me undo a couple times to get it back. Undo, undo. Now change the 60-day to zero. We get false. Excellent. Now change it to one, and we get 50. Yay. Undo, undo. Finally, we'll change the 30-day to zero. We get false. Excellent. Now I'll change it to one and we get 25. Sounds like we're good to go. Let me undo, undo, and we're good to proceed. We now have the independent parts of this rule tested out and working correctly, so let's put it all together. If we look back at our parts of the rule and verbalize them again, it would go something like this. If we have a 90-day past due amount, then the penalty is $100. If we don't have a 90-day past due, then ask, if we have a 60-day past due amount, 
And if we do, then we have a $50 penalty. If we don't have a 60-day balance, then we need to ask, well, do we have a 30-day balance then? If that's true, then we have a $25 penalty. If we don't have any past due balances or all these tests are false, then we have no penalty or zero penalty. Now that we've stated it, let's type it out. Going into the top if statement, we have the logical check to see if we have a 90-day balance. If we do, then we get 100. All right, cool. If we don't, then what do we do? Well, we want to do the 60-day check, don't we? If we look into the formula here, it shows that if we're down here in the false part of this if function, we render a false. Well, that's not quite right then, is it? If we get to here, we don't want to display false, but rather we want to perform this if statement from the 60-day part of the rule. So let me delete this false here and type in that 60 formula from our memory. If this 60-day cell is greater than zero, then this 60-day penalty amount applies. Now a comma, and we get to the value of false area of this if function. What do we want to do if we get here, you ask? Well, the only time we would get here is if there is no 90-day balance and there's no 60-day balance. So let me ask the question again now that we're better prepared for it. What do we want to do if we get here? Well, we want to do our 30-day past due balance check right here, don't we? So let me type in that if statement here into this value if false area of this if function. If, left parentheses, the 30-day balance cell is greater than zero, comma, if this value is true, then we put this penalty amount here, then a comma. Finally, in this value if false area, what do we do? If we go back to our rule, what do our accountants want if there's no 90, 60, or 30 day pass to amount? They want a zero. So that's all we have to put here, and then we're done. Almost. In order to close out this formula, we need to put in the right number of right parentheses. We can either count up all the left facing ones, one, two, three, and then just put three right facing ones here, or we can put in one at a time and watch the Microsoft IntelliSense make the parentheses pairs briefly glow as we type them in as they get matched up one at a time by Excel. I like that way, so let's put in one, ooh, two, ah, and the third one, ta-da, now we're all done. The last thing we want to do before we test it out is to get this formula from this cell down to this one. There are a few ways. If we just copy the cell and paste it, we'll get all kinds of errors from incorrectly referenced cells, so I don't want to do that and potentially create all kinds of a mess. I'll just go into this formula and click in the formula bar and highlight it all, and then right-click and copy it into memory. Now I'll hit the Escape key, and now I'll go down here to column L and click on this cell where I want the formula to go, and then I'll go into its formula bar, right click, and paste. If I don't want to right click and paste, I can hit the keyboard shortcut of Control V. If I copy that formula down now, we're good to go. I still want to test it out, so I'll copy this formula down one more row for a simulated testing company and test it out to see if it all still works. Let me put zeros in all three of these cells. Okay, we have a zero penalty. That's a good starting point. Now I'll put $1 here in our 30-day balance. Got 25, good deal. Now I'll put a dollar in here for the 60-day balance, and we get 50. Awesome. Finally, we put a dollar in here for our 90-day balance, and we get a penalty of $100. We've completely built out this rule, and we have a very happy group of accountant customers. Don't worry, though. Accountants will always come up with new rules to make themselves unhappy again, but that's what keeps us busy, and we love to make them happy all over again. All right, that's it for Level 2. See you in Level 3.